All right, so in this particular video, we will deal with solving quadratic equations um, that end up having complex conjugate solutions. And so uh, the first problem I want to do here, uh, as you see, number 12, um, we're basically going to use the square root principle to be able to do it. So um, you want to find the complex zeros of this particular function. So we know that we have to take the function and set it equal to zero. But now, if we subtract four of both sides here, we see that we end up having uh, x squared is equal to negative four. If you know anything about real numbers, you know that whenever you take a real number and you square it, you have to end up with something non-negative. So this is one of the clues that lets you know that uh, this is going to be a complex solution. So here, um, if we follow the square root principle as we normally would, we would end up with this. Now, uh, we know that whenever we deal with a uh, square root of a negative number, that ends up being an imaginary number. So we could split that up into being square root of negative 1 times square root of 4. We know that square root of negative 1 within a complex number system is just represented by i, and square root of 4 is 2. So we would just end up with plus or minus 2i as our answer. And so we go ahead and just type that in. Got 2i and the minus 2i. Uh, we should be good to go there. Okay. And so for the graph, if you remember back from a uh, previous video about the discriminant, we know that this particular function here will not be crossing the x-axis at any time uh, because that's why we're getting complex solutions here. So c would not be the if we remember what we know about transformations, we know that x squared plus 4 um, is changing the graph of x squared by doing a vertical shift upward for a unit. So our correct graph here would be b. So with that, we'll go ahead and move on to our next question. So on to our next question. Um, our next question, we still have this quadratic function. And we want to go ahead and find out what are the zeros of it. So if we start off, um, we can look at the discriminant and sort of figure out uh, what the solutions are going to look like. So um, we know that our A is going to be 1, our B is going to be negative 8, and our C is going to be uh, 17. So let's go ahead and write that down. Our A is 1, B is negative 8, and C is 17. So whenever we pull all this in, we have a negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 17. We see that we have 64 minus 68, which gives us a negative 4. So this tells us that um, indeed we're going to have a complex conjugate solution here. Okay? So um, we want to keep that in mind. Uh, we'll just say that our discriminant here is going to be a negative 4. So I'll just do that by a delta sign, that's a negative 4, and I'll go ahead and clear out everything else so that we can have room to solve this problem now. Alright, so now that um, we've got everything cleared out, we know what our A, B, and C are going to be, and I'll go ahead and write that down again. Our A is going to be 1, B is going to be negative 8, and our C is going to be 17. And so if we come here through our negative b, which is a negative of negative 8, plus or minus square root of, and we know all this just ends up being a negative 4, and divide that by 2 times a, which is 1. Then here we know subtract, sorry, uh, minus a negative is the same as addition. So that will give us positive 8 plus or minus. Here when we do this, we know that this changes to square root of 1 times square root of 4, which ends up giving us 2i. And then we take all that divided by 2. If we take 8 divided by 2, it's 4 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so we could just simplify that to uh, 4 plus or minus i. So our two complex solutions um, would be 4 plus i and 4 minus i. So go ahead and type that in right quick. And 
here again. We know that our graph parabola should be uh, looks like a U facing upward. Um, but this time, uh, the only thing that's different is uh, depending on where it is. So we know that B would be um, not a viable answer here because we actually have C. There's two real uh, solutions for where the actual function cross the x-axis here. So now we have to think about is this the graph or is this the graph? And so um, a quick way to figure out that is to put this back into um, the form that looks something like this. To put it in this form. Okay. And so in knowing that if we find out what H is, if H is positive, then we know it's going to be uh, graph C is the answer. If H is negative, then we're going to find out that graph A is the answer. So we'll go ahead and clear this out and see which one it is. So and remember, H is the X coordinate for our vertex here. And so if our A is 1, our B is a negative 8, and our C is 17, when we go plug this in, a negative b would be negative 8 divided by 2a. So we end up getting a positive 4 as an answer. So that tells us that graph c should be um, what our answer should be. All right. And so um, that concludes our examples on how to solve quadratic equations by using the quadratic formula and we're having uh, complex conjugate solutions.